Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today I've got part two of the helicopter guide, how to dodge and evade missiles effectively. So we're gonna go over all the different methods I use to stay alive in the helicopters. Sorry, this has been a long time coming. I know it's been a while since I made the first part, but if you haven't seen that, I thoroughly suggest you go and watch that first. It covers all the basics from settings, controls, and key bindings, all the way up to strafing targets, to gaining and losing altitude and momentum effectively. Now, if you are new here and you enjoy the content, perhaps consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future Battlefield videos like the rest of this tutorial series. Thanks for the support, guys. It means a lot. So let's begin here with the most common missile type. You'll be evading the AA missile. So just for transparency's sake, we are going to go over the very basics here to begin with. Whilst 90% of the people watching this know, you know, how lock-ons and flares work, if you're new to Battlefield and this is your first game, you may not. So if you know how to use flares perfectly fine, you can skip over this section uh, with the timestamps, although, you know, you might learn a little bit from it as well. So your flares are going to be the first and easiest way that you can avoid an AA missile. Whenever somebody locks you with a missile, no matter if it's from a vehicle or infantry player, you're going to hear three different sounds. The first sound is an intermittent beeping. This means that the missile user is currently acquiring a lock-on. Once they have a successful lock on you, the sound will change to a solid continuous tone. And then once they've fired the missile and there is an incoming threat, you'll hear another intermittent beeping sound, but this time much faster and more urgent sounding. And it's on that last sound when the missile has already been fired when you want to pop your flares. Now, a lot of players panic and pop their flares too early when a missile hasn't even been fired yet. And, you know, whilst that works, you aren't really depleting the ammunition of the missile user on the ground. Now, there is one exception to that rule, and that is actually the Sundance anti-armor grenade that locks onto ground and air targets alike. So if you are locked by a Sundance nade, you won't actually hear the first two sounds. It'll go straight to the missile fired sound. So if that happens, you can be sure that it's a Sundance nade that's in the air and not an AA missile, in which case you can actually simply outrun it. As long as you keep moving and strafing around your target, the Sundance nade won't be able to catch you up, at least in the Nightbird, and eventually it'll run out of steam and disappear. So try not to waste your flares on those because, you know, even if they do hit you, it's only, I think, around 20 or 25 damage, so nothing that you can't repair up. So when you hit your flares, a bunch of them will pop out, instantly nullifying any in-flight missiles. But after that, you'll also spit out one of these flares periodically for a few seconds. And this is your grace period, if you will. Nobody can lock you on again for those few seconds and you need to get safely behind cover to allow your flares to recharge. Otherwise, whoever just locked you on is likely going to do so again and this time you won't have any flares. So that covers most of the obvious stuff, but what happens when you get locked on and you don't have any flares or you simply don't want to use your flares? So the next best way to evade an AA missile is to line of sight it behind a building, a piece of cover, some terrain, Whatever works, really. To be effective at doing this, though, you need to know where the missile is coming from, and you can tell that via the missile warning system on the screen. That will display the direction that you're getting locked from, but it won't display the range. So if you have absolutely no idea who is firing that missile, for all you know, they could be directly underneath you. And in that case, it's probably best to err on the side of caution and just use your flares. So when you get locked and, you know, let's say you don't have any flares, you have to do two things simultaneously. Firstly, turn your helicopter towards the lock-on indicator so you can see where the missile is in the air, how far away it is, and therefore predict how long you have to get to cover. The missile will make a beeline for you, taking the shortest route possible. So if you can quickly put something between you and it, then problem solved. The second thing you need to do as you turn to face the missile is start moving towards your chosen piece of cover. You already need to have some good places in mind to take cover behind. I can't stress that enough and you know these really only come with map knowledge and experience. Oftentimes bits of cover on the outskirts of a map aren't places you ever notice as an infantry player but in a helicopter they can be a lifesaver. 
So some really popular ones just you know off the top of my head are the skyscrapers on Kaleidoscope, the ship on Stranded, no matter which side of, of the map uh, the lock-on is coming from, you can always use one side of the ship because it's in the centre. Uh, again, the ship on Discarded, you know, there are just tons of them really. Generally speaking though, the larger the cover, the better, but it doesn't have to be anything so big or obvious either. Even, you know, a sand dune can work incredibly well. Now, if you get caught out and you can't get to your cover in time and you know that the missile will reach you before, it's still worth flying down, hugging the ground and flying away from the missile. And you never know, you might get lucky and it could connect with something small on the ground. As with so many things in this game, practice makes perfect. The more you get comfortable with lock-ons, where they're coming from, uh, missile travel times, the movement of the helicopter, you know, you will become more comfortable with saving your flares and playing around a piece of cover instead. Even if you do get hit with the missile though, you know, you can still eat one and be okay. You can fly away and repair, so it's not the end of the world. Now, before we move on to the next type of missile, I should also mention under radar. So under radar is a mechanic that was actually added recently to Battlefield 2042 for both jets and helis. And what it does is it makes you immune to vehicle lock-ons when you fly below 30 meters. So if you've ever been in a Wildcat AA tank, uh, you try to lock onto a heli and you've seen the under radar sign pop up, that's why. So if you know that there's an enemy jet with radar missiles or there's a Wildcat locking you from across the map, you can always play close to the ground so they can't lock you on. Do bear in mind though that this doesn't affect infantry lock-ons, or at least it shouldn't. There has been a bug in Season 4 causing under radar to also affect infantry AA missiles, so I'm not sure if that's been fixed yet, but my point is that the lock-on sounds for vehicles and infantry sound exactly the same, so sometimes it can be difficult to know if it is indeed a vehicle locking you and therefore if under radar will be effective or not. Generally, I would say again, err on the side of caution, if you don't know what is locking you, just play it safe and use the flares. But if you know that there's a wildcat seeking you out the whole time, you can definitely make some nice usage of under radar. And in any case, it's generally just a nice idea to, I wouldn't say exactly hug the ground, but play close to the ground. You know, the more you are close to the ground, the less opportunity anyone is going to have to lock you on and you're going to be making use of under radar at the same time. Now finally here, let's move on to the real threat out there, Liz's TV missile, aka the dreaded Lissile. So these things will one-shot Nightbirds and Stealth Hillies, and they'll do 80% damage to an attack heli. So they are absolutely a massive threat to you, probably one of the biggest threats. However, they have one weakness, and that is sound. You can hear them coming. Now we all know that Lissiles aren't that easy to use, but to make that user's job as difficult as possible and avoid yourself getting one shot, you need to move your heli as erratically and unpredictably as you can. Pitching up and rolling to one side is a good way to do this. Alternatively, you can quickly uh, duck your helicopter down, which is a nice move too. Since the Lissile is usually gonna be coming from the ground and sort of moving upwards, them having to correct your movement and aim it further down is usually quite tricky to pull off. So I know that the little nosedive is uh, quite a popular trick there. However, the most important thing here is the timing. You know, if you do it too late, you will get hit. Do it too early and she'll follow your movement, whichever direction you go, and still hit you. Now you can tell how close the missile is because of the whistle. Once again, this kind of comes down to experience, but the louder the whistle sound, the closer the missile and what you want to do is make your dodge just before it hits so the operator has no chance to correct their aim. Just like with the AA missiles, you want to look for where the missile is, visually spot it and basically face it head on. The reason for this is that hitting a helicopter right on the nose is much harder to track and you have no idea which way it'll turn, right? Is he going to roll left or right, up or down? Who knows? Now, if you don't face that missile, and somebody gets a side shot on you, that's much easier to predict where you're flying and simply boost the missile and track you. But more importantly, you're showing a much bigger surface area. The side of the helicopter is like twice as big, if not more than the front. And then there's the tail of the heli as well. Remember, it doesn't matter where that missile hits you, 
it's always going to be a one shot. So the less of your heli that you put on display, the less that Liz user has to hit. Now, as a final note here, you can, if you're good enough, shoot the missile out of the sky with your cannons. And this has gotten a little bit easier because they've increased the size of the missile's hitbox. Now, this is another reason why you want to face the missile as well. But honestly, I wouldn't really recommend this until your aim has gotten very good as tracking a boosted missile through the air isn't really that easy. Now, we will, of course, be covering aiming in a future video so stay tuned for that as i mentioned at the start of the video though part one is up as well so if you haven't seen that go and check it out i hope you guys found this useful i hope you got something out of it leave a like if you did thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video